Does it not say? It doesn't say that. It just says that's the Sally Ford. To Sally Forth unobserved. Unobserved. That. I don't know. I don't know how much. <laughs> I don't know how much their money is worth. I didn't even read it. I don't. I couldn't tell you to save my life. So where's our guide if this is a guided tour? We have to go into the first floor. Oh, okay. So once we go into the first floor. Well, I did. I put. That's why I put something in. I, you never know. Oh, what does that mean if it bounces out? It's going to go over the camera in the same It means you're going to burst into flames. Oh, look at that. Uh, those were their steps to get up there. I'm taking pictures of all these things too. Yeah, no, that's fine. Get a picture of like these old steps. Yeah. Like. Picture of steps with your head in the way. Oh, look at that, the wear marks. If you want to follow me, guys, we're just going to start the tour Perfect. now. Perfect, thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I know. It's okay. I'd, I'd rather have the tour anyway. Because then I have somebody speaking Irish. Okay, guys, so we're just heading up to the first floor. So everyone will go to the railing and mind your step because the stairs are quite steep. Okay, go ahead. Are you ready? Yep. You can come down afterwards and do that. I know. <laughs> oh, wow. <clears throat> You're not videoing this, are you? Yes, I am. <laughs> I don't want to. I'll, I'll point it at your head. Is that better for you? <laughs> Oh, I can't see the video. Yeah, well, it's not the falling part you'd have to worry about. It would be the falling on me part. <laughs> oh, wow. Welcome to Joe Castle, the ancestral home of the McSweeney's. So at the moment we're standing in the tower house. This is the oldest part of the castle. It was built in the 1420s by the O'Donnells. 20 years later, it was given to the McSweeney clan. So the McSweeney's were Scottish, Galagas soldiers, and Irish, Galagas is Galagas, which, okay, which translates to foreign young warriors. So they were mercenaries. Foreign young warriors. So they were mercenaries. They were very strong links between Scotland and Ireland, the 12 and 1300s, and it's thought that the McSweeney's came to Donegal during that time. They would have fought for the O'Donnells, they would have been given Doe Castle as payment for their services. So this little room in here was the guard robe. So it's a toilet, it was also used as a wardrobe. They hung their clothes in above the toilet, because the uric acid from the waist killed fleas and mice. So it wouldn't have smelled very good, but at least they wouldn't have been itchy. <laughs> now, the hole leads down, and out the side of the castle wall. You can see it if you walk around. There would have been a bucket or something placed in there, and some poor servant would have had the job of them to not out every day. So you can take a look at him if he's like. <laughs> so you didn't have much, just um, the 
Tyrosy will be part of the Oh wow, it's not that huge. It, it, I think it, it, it. I think it does. It's been cleaned out. You're okay. How tiny this doorway is, eh? Jesus. No, what happened to you? I can tell you. We're so tiny. <laughs> They would have had to have been. Oh, wow. Well, mm, huh. this is their toilet. Wow. And there's a spy window. Yeah, well, that's the Canadian oh, food. I don't know. Makes sense. Ready? Yeah. Skim on the walls to keep out the damp. They made the castle look like it would have done in the 1400s. Now they also put in this oak staircase here. So originally, there would not have been stairs from the floor below us leading up here. So this all would have been covered over. The only access to this room is from above. So the stairs we come up originally continue on, bypass this floor completely, and they lead out the floor above us. This staircase here, and this staircase behind the wooden gate over there. Both also lead down from the floor above us. And they would have been secret staircases, so this would have been a secret room. So it's probably a bedroom, it could have been used as a safe room in times of attack. Or another theory, which is my favourite, is that it was a trap room. So when the castle was under attack, the attackers go up and out onto the floor above us, and one of these staircases would be uncovered. So the attackers came down, the McSweeney's would escape back up the other one, they'd block it off. They block the other one off the top and they trap the attackers in this room here. So you just want to head up to the next floor, just mind your head at the top because the door's very low down. marks on the wall over here from a pulley system. So they would have winched goods and supplies up the side of the castle wall and brought them in here to prepare for attack. So during the time that the Sweeney's on Dove Castle, there were 13 chieftains. We have documentation on two. So the first is on August the 2nd, and he was chieftain here for 26 years, from 1570 until 1596. He was known as an influential, wealthy and generous man who gave good counsel during times of war, he was a foster father to Red Hugh O'Donnell, played a big part in the flight of the Earls. He also gave refuge to the Spanish Armada in 1588. So they had attacked England and they were defeated. And they tried to escape by going back around Ireland. 
but they shipwrecked off the coast of Donegal because the maps of the Atlantic weren't very good at that time. So Owen all gave them refuge here until they could find another way home. The other McSweeney chieftain that we have documentation on is the last McSweeney chieftain. And this is Milwara and Vatavui, or Miles of the Yellow Staff. And he was chieftain here during the Nine Years' War of the 1590s. And he was a very controversial figure because he actually switched sides between the English and the Irish at least five times. So he was knighted by Queen Elizabeth I, but two years later was back fighting for the Irish at the Battle of Kinsale in 1601. So the Irish lost that battle, and as the English forces swept north to subdue Ulster, they took over the castles, and they became English military garrisons. So the next 20 years, Doe Castle was owned by Captain John Sanford. Now the tower is the oldest part of the castle, it's actually the only Irish built part of the castle. So the two story hall and the bottom walls outside were all built 200 years later by Captain Sanford. Some of the Sanfords are actually buried in the graveyard at the end of the car park. So the castle briefly regained its status as a Gaelic stronghold in the 1640s when a grandson of Midwara returned and recaptured the castle. While he was here, the exiled Onro O'Neill sailed back from France with 150 Irish veteran soldiers. Here he met Sir Phil O'Neill and they marched up through Kilmacrennan leading an army of 1500 Gaelic rebels in a Gaelic uprising. Now the Irish lost that battle as well and the castle was once more returned to English ownership. So it passed from owner to owner for the remainder of the 1600s and then the 1700s, so 1790, when the castle came into the hands of General George Vaughan Hart. So the Vaughan Harts were a very well established English family in Donegal at that time, and the general had been a career soldier in the British Army, who fought in North America and in India. And he commenced the third building phase of Doe Castle, which was to turn it into a manor house. So if you go out into the garden, and you look back up on the wall above the door, we see GVH engraved in the stone for George Vaughan Hart. So, although he turned Doe into a manor house, he'd been a soldier most of his life, and he wanted Doe to remain looking like a fortress. So he brought cannons back from the Battle of Seringapatam in India and placed those cannons along the top of the barn walls outside. You can still see two of those cannons in the garden of the Arms Hotel in Dunfanny. He also <laughs> brought a servant back from India with him. And this servant was very well known because they always dressed in their native clothes. They were also said to have slept fully armed outside the general's bedroom at night to keep him safe. Now the general actually died because he fell down the stairs here at Doe Castle, which is why we have to be very careful going up and down. The castle remained in the Vaughan Hart family for the next few years. They sold it on in the late 1800s, passed from owner to owner, becoming more and more derelict until it was sold to the Irish government in 1932. They took worse care of the castle than ever, hence the roof and all the floors falling in. So it's thanks to the OPW that the castle is in the condition that it's in today and that the history of it is still alive. And would you like to hear our, ver our version of a Romeo and Juliet story? Sure. So Aileen was the daughter of one of the McSweeney chieftains, and Tarla was the son of one of the O'Boy chieftains. And Aileen and Tarla fell in love. But the O'Boys and the McSweeneys were enemy clans, so they weren't allowed to see each other. So every night, Aileen would stand at this window here and she would look out over Lacker River. And every night, Tarla would dress up as a fisherman and he would sail along the river in a tiny little fishing boat just to see Aileen through the window. Until one night, Aileen's father recognised Tarla and he was so angry he had him captured and thrown in the dungeon where Tarla died. Now Aileen was so distraught that she jumped from the window. She killed herself. Now the legend goes, but when the moon shines very bright over Doe Castle, you can still see Aileen and Tarla sailing along the river with their tiny little fishing boat finally together. So that's the chair guide. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me or any further guys. There's more information on the walls and on the ground floor where it also the villagers book if you'd like to sign it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm assuming there used to be another floor? Yeah. It's in a good spot though.
Oh, I didn't look at that one yet.